Hey everyone, Truth Surge here again. Glad you could make it to part two. In this video, I'm going to show you something very peculiar about the way the early Christians viewed the second coming of Jesus. But before we do that, I want to look at the definition of a certain word that's going to come into play in this piece of evidence. And that word is revelation and all its derivations, reveal, revealed, reveals, revealing. So that word, we need to look at that for a couple of minutes uh, to make sure that we understand what that word really means and how it might have been used uh, in the New Testament. Basically what it means is something that was previously unknown has now been made known. If I reveal a deep, dark secret uh, to everybody, I don't know what that might be, but if I did, uh, it was unknown until I revealed it. And now everybody knows it. Um, a magician reveals the way he did a card trick or the way he did a magic trick. Before he revealed the secret, nobody knew it. After he revealed it, people knew it. Now the other aspect that's extremely important in this is the concept that you can't reveal something twice, okay? That's extremely important here, and, and I want to, I don't think I can overstate it. You cannot reveal something twice. If I tell you my deep, dark secret today, and then tomorrow I tell you my deep, dark secret again, it's not a revelation the second time, is it? It's only a revelation the first time, because it was unknown the first time. When I tell it to you again tomorrow, you already knew it. So it's not a revelation the second time. And that means that when something is viewed as a revelation, it means that it's happening for the first time. This is extremely important, and that's why I spend this time now before we look at these verses that I want to examine. Now, let me just mention one thing before we get into the verses. The last book of the Bible is called the Apocalypse of John. Apocalypse comes from the Greek word Apocalypses, which means revelation. The entire last book of the Bible is a revelation from Jesus to John. It was something he did not know until Jesus told him. And so we know now that revelation is, uh, has the main meaning of making something known that previously was unknown. Previously it was a mystery. It's like taking the, uh, the sheet off the painting. Okay. Ta-da! That's the, that's the feeling of something being revealed. Now, before we look at these verses, let's just uh, go over this idea of what the earliest Christians believed uh, in terms of Jesus, where he had been, where he hadn't been, um, and how they would have viewed uh, his end-time appearance on earth. They believed, basically, that Jesus had existed in heaven for all time. He had been in heaven, and he had died in the past descended through the levels of heaven, was killed by the demons, went back up, and now he's at the right hand of God. He's been there for ages and ages, long before uh, Paul came on the scene. And so in their eyes, Jesus was a deity. He was a God. He was the Son of God, and he'd always been in heaven, but he had never been on earth. He had never walked and lived a life in Palestine just a few decades before Paul. And so these people would have naturally viewed Jesus's appearance on earth to take everyone to heaven as a first coming, a first coming, a final coming, and the only coming, an appearance, a manifestation. If we look at the earliest documents of Christianity, which are uh, the epistles, basically, we should see this. We should not see any of these writers refer to Jesus's in time appearance as a second coming or a return. If what, if what I'm telling you is true, if the Jesus myth theory is true, none of the early Christian writers should refer to Jesus's second coming as a second coming. Let's examine 41 references to Jesus's second coming in these early writings, the epistles. And what we're going to do, this will be uh, a way we can keep track. I'll have counters for returns, second comings, comings again, anything that, that would mean a return. I'll have a counter for uh, 
uh, comings. I'll have a counter for appearances, and we'll have a counter for the word revelation. Uh, if any of them refer to Jesus's appearance as a revelation, we'll keep track of that too. So let's go examine these verses. We're going to keep keep a score, and when we're done, uh, we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail, and then wrap up.